Mary, did you know that your baby boy would one day walk on water? Mary, did you know that your baby boy would save our sons and daughters? Did you know that your baby This child that you delivered will soon deliver you. Mary, did you know that your baby boy would give sight to the blind man? Mary, did you know that your baby With his hand Didn't you know That your baby boy Has walked where angels try And when you kiss your little baby You kiss the face of God Oh Mary Reverence God and thank Him for our being here and to each of you who are here tonight as we study God's Word and as we prepare for Sunday, December 16th, love and worship God. Is that the right title? Amen. Yes. Yes. Amen. Yes. Love and worship God. And this is a call to the people by David. Uh, for them to love and worship God, and not just because he called them to this, but because they have a reason uh, for this. Amen. Amen. Uh, we <coughs> love God because he first loved us. Amen. 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 We worship him because our relationship with him is worth something to us. Amen. And the measure of what is worth to us is in the extent of our worship. And we're all familiar with the Psalms, uh, which are, uh, some say, the hymn, uh, the hymnal of Israel, or Israel's hymnal. Um, these Psalms are meant to be sang. They have all had tunes at one time, and they were mostly prayed. Mostly, not all of them, but mostly they are praise unto God. They range from praise, uh, extreme frustration, anger at how God appears to be addressing or not addressing the problems of a broken world. And there are people mad at God right now because of what's going on in the world. Amen. But the truth is, when God got through with the world, it was good. Good. And very good. Amen. It wasn't until man got a hope to it. <laughs> that the world has um, just spent out of control. Often there is disappointment and confusion expressed over how God's covenant people are being mistreated while evildoers seem to suffer no consequences in doing as they please. And, and if, you, if you have that issue when you see the prosperity of the wicked or when you see others seemingly who have no commitment and no uh, relationship with God doing much better and seem like much better off, read the 73rd and 74th Psalms. Just read them. And see what David said, uh, how this had afflicted him. Uh, and, and, and and if you're not careful, you'll be tempted to go uh, into the world, uh, go back into your old lifestyle. But you know what? Isn't it uh, funny that uh, when we in our old lifestyle, we, wait, we couldn't wait to get out of it? 
most people. <laughs> yes, sir. All right. <clears throat> but now that we're out of it, we want to go back to it. Yeah, Lord. Amen. But uh, there, there's an explanation of that. I won't use it here because some people be offended by it. No sentiment seems to be off limits in the Psalms. This make the book of immense value to God's people uh, when they pray. Uh, in this Psalms, we are taught how to pray, how to praise, how to uh, lift God up, and how to acknowledge his manifold blessing toward us and that's part of what takes place in this 103rd uh, Psalms. Uh, the above factors and others have resulted in Bible scholars noting various types of psalms. They are psalms that are hymns, psalms of thanksgiving, psalms of lament, psalms, royal psalms, wisdom psalms, messianic psalms. Certainly some of these can overlap but one must be careful not to be too rigid with classification of what type of psalms they're dealing with. A writer can go from lament to praise in the same brief psalms. Like any hymn, the book of psalms includes contributions by many different authors and covers wide span of time. The oldest psalm is by Moses, and that's the 90th number of psalms. Lord, thou hast been our dwelling place in all generations. Before the mountains were brought forth, the other has formed the earth and the world from everlasting to everlasting. Thou art God. Thou turnest man to destruction and says, Return, ye children of men. For a thousand years in our sight of but it's yesterday. And you know it goes on and on as it when it is past. That is a psalm of Moses. And it's believed to be one of the oldest of all the Psalms. And there is at least one Psalm that comes out of the setting of the captivity of God's people in Babylon. And that's Psalms 137. Now these two benchmarks are separated by approximately 900 years. So the Psalms, this somebody didn't just sit down and write them all at once. Over a period of years, they have been collected and add it to uh, the hymnal or uh, this book of Israel for praise of God. About a half of the Psalms are attributed to King David, known as the sweet psalmist of Israel. And some say the sweet singer uh, of Israel in 2 Samuel 23 and 1. Today's passage from Psalms 103 one of those Davidic Psalms. Uh, on September 9th, 1862, Abraham Lincoln signed the Emancipation Proclamation to free African slaves in America. Can you imagine the celebration as the word traveled from plantation to plantation, city to city, state to state? Stern disbelief gave way to shouts of joy, hand clapping, dancing, a celebration. Over 200 years after the first African slave arrived in America, the institution of slavery was abolished and liberty was proclaimed. As we reflect on our lives, we have many causes for celebration. David names a few. We celebrate for forgiveness of sin. We celebrate for supernatural healing. We celebrate for redemption from destruction. We celebrate and the execution of the righteous mercy of God, which is spelled out in this psalm. God has blessed us so much that sometimes we take his blessings for granted. Instead of praising God for what he's done for us, we get angry because he hasn't done what we want him to do. We need to practice a phrase from David's song. Bless the Lord. We need to focus on his greatness. 
We need to remember the time we've transgressed his will and yet been forgiven. The former African slaves could have focused on what they had endured. Instead, they gave praise to God who delivered them. Mm -hmm. Suffering will always be a fact of life in this sinful world, but God's blessings will be poured upon those who do his will. And so now we open uh, uh, this psalm talking about open exhortation, a reason to praise. Verse 1, please. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord. Yes, bless. The word bless is used in scripture, what God does for people, what they offer up to him. God's blessings are his gifts to his people, what the psalmist David calls his benefits. Psalms 103, 2, next. The, popular, the people's blessings of God is expressed in praise of him and gratitude for those benefits. Why do you think some people say you can't bless God? Some of you are always saying uh, God's got everything. God's got everything, okay. But God don't have your praise if you don't, don't give it to him. <laughs> right? Right. And, 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 and blessing God can be both spiritual and physical. Hello? So by the way, you can't bless God physically because he owns everything. Well, if his church needs finances and you don't give it to him and you got it, when you bless, well, listen, and, and I can tie this right over when the Lord said, what you've done to the least of these, my little ones, you've done it unto me. What does Matthew 25 say? I was in need. You go down hungry, you know, outdoors, all uh, in jail. You go down the whole list. And when you did it to, so we can bless God by blessing the work of God and by giving God praise for what he's done. Our spiritual blessing of God is when we lift up our hands and cry unto the Lord out of gratefulness and appreciation and thanksgiving, Lord, you have been good to me. Yes. Amen. And that's something that can't nobody else do for you. Amen. You have to do that for yourself. So Amen. we can express blessings. Uh, uh, the people's blessing of God is expressed in the praise of him for gratitude for those benefits. Indeed, the psalm offers use the words bless and praise rather interchangeably as parallel thoughts. David's blessings of the Lord is not a casual, half-hearted sentiment. Mm -hmm. And I don't think of nothing you can make a person do. Y'all don't hear what I'm saying. You can involve them in the worship experience, you can involve them in the praise, singing and all that, but you really can't make a person bless the Lord. Mm -hmm. What does David say? Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me. Yeah. So it has to come out of you. Right. It ain't nothing somebody teach you. It got to come out of you. David, blessing the Lord is not a casual, half-hearted sentiment. It comes from the very soul. The soul, the word soul, used to signify a person's being. Uh, essence. Frequently used device of Hebrew poetry known as parallelism. In parallelism, which you see right here in this particular scripture, you see the same thing said in two different ways. The first line says, bless the Lord, O my soul. Then it turned around, O my soul is all that is within me. Bless his holy name. So twice we're so bless the Lord. Bless the Lord is bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me. Parallelism. And he says it twice because of its significance. All that is within that person 
David is talking about himself, encouraging remembrance of the Lord's goodness. The person's name represents the individual character of uniqueness. And I want you to know that there are times, I don't know about anybody else, but I think of the goodness of the Lord. And I have to admit, Sunday was one of those days for me. I, I just was thinking about when I look back over my life. And I see what God has done. Uh, it makes you want to bless him, don't it? Yes, sir. Yes. Yes. Make you want to thank him. Make Amen. you want to praise him. Yes. Make you want to honor him. Yeah, do you remember what he's done for you? Yeah. I ain't talking about the stuff that you could have done. I'm talking about the stuff that nobody could have done but him. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All right, verse 2 says what? Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all. Don't, don't you dare forget his benefits. His benefits. Yeah, Lord. Don't you dare forget what it means to be a child of God. Being a child of God comes with benefits. Am I right? Amen. Didn't God promise Abraham? Mm -hmm. yeah. Then he passed it on to Isaac. Yeah. Then he passed it on to Jacob. Mm -hmm. Then he passed it on to Joseph. And it came on down to Judah. Mm -hmm. we, we got a reason uh, to express. A lot of people have accepted jobs not because of the pay, but because of the benefit. Amen. Amen. Because sometimes the benefits add up to be more than the pain. That's right. Yes, sir. But God offers benefits to those who are his children and those who accept him. He warned them of the high price that would accompany forgetfulness. Amen. And when you forget about his goodness toward you, and you start acting like you did it yourself. Uh -huh. God don't have to do nothing to you. He's just back up off of you. If y'all understand that expression, he just have to just, all he has to do is just stop doing for you. Amen. He don't have to do nothing to you. So uh, uh, we are encouraged. Yeah. We have reasons yeah. to praise. Thank you. Thank you. And maybe I'm talking too plural here. Maybe I need to say, like uh, Joshua, mm -hmm. I have reason. I have a reason. As for me and my house, yes. we have a reason. Yes. We have many reasons mm -hmm. to praise the Lord. Yeah. Verse 3 says what? Well, who forgiveth all thy iniquities? Who forgiveth? All thy diseases. So David specifies here, as I said a little earlier, two specific types of blessings. Mm. They are spiritual and they are physical. All of us have received the spiritual blessing of the forgiveness of all of our iniquities. Thank you. Amen. We all been messed up. Yeah, we have. And if you confess your sins, he is faithful and just to forgive you of your sins and to cleanse you from all unrighteousness. So I bless his name for my spiritual blessings. He forgave all my iniquities and in and then he turned around and blessed me physically by healing all of my diseases. Mm. Yeah. Hallelujah. And that's a physical part. Yes, Everybody have been sick, but somebody been sick. Yes, somebody had physical ailments. Yes. Somebody has received physical diagnosis from the doctor. And even though the doctors may have gone in and did their part, it was God that healed you. Amen. 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 And more and more, I'm noticing that doctors will tell you, well, I can do the surgery. 
And I encourage you all to pray because God does the healing. All right. Now, that, that, that is a faith movement that we had not seen before. So uh, Jesus demonstrated his power both to forgive sins and heal disease, as in the case of the paralytic uh, brought to Jesus. So he can forgive sins. He said, they said, he said to them, uh, your sins are forgiven you. And everybody in the audience say, Amen. who is this? Thank you. Trying to forgive people. Only God can be a, forgive sin. He said that you may know mm. who I am. Uh, take up your bed <laughs> and walk. So he healed them spiritually, and then he turned around and healed them physically. Amen. Amen. And so most of us have been healed like that spiritually first, <laughs> and then physically second. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Verse 4. Who redeemeth thou life from destruction? Who crowneth thee from loving kindness? Who crowneth thee from loving kindness? With, and, with loving kindness and tender mercy. Amen. So David described God's power to change our circumstances from the worst to the best. To be treated as royalty as we are crowned with loving kindness and tender mercies. He's been better to us than we deserve. Yeah, Lord. Uh, <laughs> this, this, it says right here, Amen. redeem thy life from destruction. Nobody understood that better than David. <laughs> Hello? His father-in-law tried his best to take him down, take him out, put him away. Yes, sir. Yes. But every time he tried to set a trap, mm -hmm. God redeemed him from destruction. Amen. Yeah. And there are others just like David who said, yeah, I know when I was on destruction's path and destruction mm -hmm. was on my path. Amen. Yeah. Or maybe I ought to say I was on the path to destruction. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Amen. And I should have been destroyed. Wow. <laughs> Thank you, God. But instead, oh, this gonna be that's just a praise party here tonight. We ain't, yeah. we ain't trying to get no, no deep theology. <laughs> we, we, we just we just have a praise party here tonight. Amen. And we just trying to throw up some reasons why we ought to be praising God. Yeah. Amen. 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 From destruction. From destruction. I haven't told this a lot of time, but I've told it before. That when I first got to Vietnam and had been there less than two days, and I was riding on the back of a truck on my way to my duty station. And while we were riding on the back of the truck, a little boy ran by our truck and threw a grenade on the truck. Mm -hmm. It was a smoke grenade. Uh, mm -hmm. But you didn't know that at the time. No, you didn't know it at the time. <laughs> but it was a snow, a smoke grenade. It could have as easily been an explosive grenade. Right. And all it did was smoke, and the guy that was in the back of the truck would have kicked it off the truck. Boy, I was on, that was my second day. I was crying and everything. <laughs> when I say crying, the smoke gets in your eyes, you know. Right. But it could have led to destruction. Right. Hallelujah. Yeah. Why is it some go in and come out, and some go in and never come out? Well, glory. Destruction. Uh, redeem my life yeah. from destruction and crown me mm. with loving kindness yes. and tender mercies. You ever think about the goodness of God and say, Lord, I don't deserve this. Yeah. 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 God said, no, I know it. Yeah. 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 <laughs> you yeah. showed up, yeah. but I'm giving it to you anyway. Yeah. His grace yeah. is marvelous. Mm. His grace is marvelous. Yes. And sometimes he treats you like you somebody. Because to God we are all important. Who satisfied thy mouth with good, good things. things. Good good material things. Material blessings. Amen. Anybody here know you blessed with some good things? Yes, yes sir. Yeah. Yes, sir. Yes. 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 You may not have the best of anything. Mm. You may not have the latest car. 
You may not have the biggest house. You may not have the finest clothes. But he has satisfied your mouth with good things. Some of the things you wanted, God has given to you. Amen. Am I right? Yeah. And if you get it, if you got some type of transportation, you ought to say thank you. Thank you, Lord. If you got some type of change of clothes, you ought to say thank you. Yeah. If you got a shelter that belongs to you, or God is allowing you to be a steward over it, yeah. you ought to say thank you. Thank you Hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you. Satisfy your mouth with Hallelujah. good things so thank you, that the youth is renewed like the eagles. Amen. And sometimes, even though I know that age is pressing on, I feel good. Yeah, yes, I have to tell no story. Yes, hey man, I ain't doing my Jane Brown impression tonight either. <laughs> but I feel good. <laughs> but I knew that I would. <laughs> I feel good. <laughs> I knew that I would. <laughs> so good. <laughs> so good. <laughs> Hallelujah. I got you, Lord. Amen. Yeah. I ain't gonna get it to that I feel nice. <laughs> but he renews us. Amen. Thank God that he lets us, we endure our challenges, but God can renew your strength. Can he give you a fresh mind? Amen. After you done been to the edge and Mm. said, boy, I don't know how I'm going to come back from this. But God can give you a fresh mind and he can, he can mm. refresh your physical body. Yeah, Lord. Lord. And refresh the spirit within you. Mm. And you start singing that song, I feel like going on. Yes, Lord. Mm. Though trials come on every hand, mm. I feel like going on. Yeah. God's character, mm -hmm. verse 6. The Lord executeth the righteousness and judgment for all that are oppressed. Amen. Uh, right executed righteousness and judgment. David now calls attention to the Lord's compassion toward the oppressed. The Lord has always been passionate that righteousness and judgment in terms of a just judgment be carried out on behalf of those who are often mistreated, overlooked because of their powerless status. And I'm going to tell you something. Sometimes you feel like <laughs> yes, sir. the enemy has a hand and you can't do nothing about it. Yeah, mm -hmm. Lord. And guess what? Most of the time you're right. Mm -hmm. But God can. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. And if you God's child, mm -hmm. God will intervene yes, he will. on your behalf. Yes, he will. Well, look at the record, and they said, well, according to our records, and if we look at this, uh, you should not be able to get this, or you shouldn't be able to do that, and they'll say to the person, go and do it for them. Y'all don't hear what I'm saying. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. God will unlock doors. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And now you know God has a special affinity for widows and orphans. Amen. Amen. And when you start mistreating widows and orphans, you stir up the wrath of God against you. And he also favors the weak and those who don't have power. And God is able to give you the victory. His people, however, do not always demonstrate such compassion. Now, God cares for those people, but do we care for them? All right. Does the church care for them? Do you as an individual care for them? All right. We need to make sure that our compassion reflects the compassion of our God. Yeah. yeah. And our God has had compassion on so many My Lord. that he has brought us to where we are. Read verse 7, please. He made, he made known his ways unto Moses, his acts unto the children of Israel. All right, within pagan religions, the worshipers are often left groping and guessing what the deities desire. There's no concept of revealed truth. And that's why a lot of people uh, uh, don't understand really what the Ten Commandments are about. The Ten Commandments are not to really put you under punishment. It's to draw the line in the sand. Amen. To let you know 
what side is right and what side is wrong. Amen. Now, if you don't know right or wrong, how you going to do right or wrong? Amen. So that's why God has given us the directives. God said, this I like and this I don't like. Amen. This I approve of, this I don't approve of. He even said on one time, I set before you life and death. Amen. Yes, Amen. Choose life. Mm. But both of them that. But you have to choose life. So he made known his ways unto Moses, his acts unto the children of Israel. Israel knew when they were out of the loop with God. Oh, Lord. And, and, and you know what the fear is in my heart today is that so many people, so many young people especially, don't know when they're out of the loop of God. Nobody taught them. Mm -hmm. And the murder spirit that's gone forth is because we haven't taught our children to honor and respect life. Mm -hmm. Only God can give life. That's right. And nobody should have the authority or the audacity to take life, especially without a cause. Yeah. Oh, and selfish desires, because you want the car that I'm driving, that's not a good cause in the eyesight of God for you to take my life. And so brothers, sisters, we know his way. And he didn't make his way known to us to make his way hard for us. He wanted us to know exactly what's expected so that we could choose to go in one direction or the other. Verse eight. The Lord is merciful Verse eight. gracious. Slow to anger. We all ought to say hallelujah. 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 Amen. Merciful. Anybody in here ever cried mercy? Mercy, yes sir. Amen. Amen. Mercy. Have you cried it more than once? Yes sir. Amen. At one time. <laughs> Amen. It's a daily chant with me. <laughs> yeah, got enough room. A daily chant. And he's gracious. Not only forgive, but he turn around and bless. After you've been forgiven. And you're not worthy to be blessed. I told you all about the time when right there home, Cole, right across from Cole School on Enright that I'd been acting up and daddy had to get me and he whooped me and made me sit on the steps. And while we were sitting there on the steps, the <laughs> Mr. Softy truck came down the street playing that little tune. Yeah. I didn't dare to even look that direction. <laughs> but he took my brother, my sister over to the Mr. Softy truck and he bought them some ice cream, amen. And they got the ice cream and they were coming back to the car and everything. And that dad, I heard my daddy say, come here, boy. And walked over there and he gave the man a nickel for me. Y'all hear what I'm saying. Not only was he merciful, he's also gracious. Hallelujah. I was getting what I didn't deserve. I had already got what I did. <laughs> yeah, there you go. You got what you did. I had already got what I deserved. But then he turned around. God is like that. God will bring you out of a situation you got yourself into. And after he deliver you out of it, he'll bless you. Amen. And you yeah, know you don't deserve it. Yes, sir. He will not always chide. But to me, this is an important scripture, y'all. You need to make a note of it. <laughs> and this word chide uh, indicates accusing or bringing a case uh, to court. God, God ain't going to keep bringing you to court and letting you go. <laughs> Hello? Uh. Those of you that had a few warrants, <laughs> <laughs> know that if you go up there and you beg loud, how loud enough, the judge will say, okay, it's your only one. It's your first one. Go ahead. Uh, God won't always chide. And I like to translate that word chide with put up with. Amen. God ain't always put up with you. Yeah. And that happens when human sin reaches a critical point and must be confronted. 
You've been getting away, you've been getting by. You've been getting away, you've been getting by. You've been getting away, you've been getting away. But ultimately, God is going to deal with you and the choices of sin that you have decided to do. Yes, sir. And even that's an act of love. It is. Because <laughs> he don't destroy you. Amen. When in a lot of cases, his law calls for him. Amen. But even in his chastening, he's doing it in an act of love. You're 100% right. But he, God delights most of all mm. in showing grace. As the previous verse notes, Satan is the one who carries the reputation of being the accuser of our brother. Amen. In Revelation 12 and 10, he accuses us daily. He want us to get a whoop. <laughs> he want us to get out of favor with God. Amen. And if, if somebody keep telling the boss stuff on you, they're going to check you out eventually. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And God is saying here, I'm not going to always try. That's why I tell people, if God didn't let you get by and get away, <laughs> thank him and try to do something different. Yeah, you're right. Because it's going to catch up with you. Amen. Amen. And you're going to be crying. Yeah. God said they're going to cry out for me and I'm going to laugh at them. Ooh, yeah. I don't ever want to be there. And I'm crying out to God for mercy and deliverance. Uh, neither will he keep his anger Boy. forever. Mama. Amen. And let me say this. God is a wonderful God. Yes. Yes. But God can be an angry God. Yes. And you don't want to fall in the hands right. of an angry God. My Lord. Amen. Because God knows how to deal with, and you know, we are so caught up in grace and in love and mm. manifested in Jesus Christ that we forget about our God. Yes, sir. Also, is just. Amen, sir. Ah. Amen. And he can get angry. And I wonder if anybody here know that you've done something to make God mad. <laughs> yeah. Anybody in here messed up enough? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it, it, it reminds me of a few times when I, I know I should have been caught. All right. But, you know, and, and people right there know I should have been caught right there. Should have been caught. But I said, oh, Lord, I done messed up. <laughs> I never said a word, man. My, my. I got that so I never do that again. Man. That's why I'm. A, I, I, I really am. I'm a, I, at that time when I was doing them things, I said I'm free to go to jail. I am. I, I didn't want to go to jail. I, I know you're like right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Amen. Well, my testimony is that God didn't give me an inside the jail ministry. <laughs> <laughs> now I could be wrong. It might come later, Malcolm. But <laughs> but 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 get this. God is still merciful because he gave some an inside jail ministry <laughs> and it helped to bring others out. Yeah. Amen. Yes, sir. Amen. Some of y'all, well, I, you may not remember, but 25 years ago I had a cousin that came to St. Louis and uh, that boy uh, had become so renowned in jail that when uh, uh, different jails in Indiana were having a problem, they would transfer him from one jail to another and he'd have a revival in that jail for about a month. And the whole place would calm down. I told him God gave him an insight to jail ministry. Now that would not get him in there. <laughs> no, but once, he got, but once he got in there, yeah. Yeah, Lord. he found his calling. Mm -hmm. And he said that he turned over a trash can in the lunchroom and made it into a pulpit. And his first sermon. 25 guys come forward to be baptized. Mm. In prison. In prison. All right. And it got to the point that he was so renowned, he finally got out of jail. He had a church and did good at that church. They called him to a bigger church. But guess what? He never was pleased with that ministry as he was with his jail ministry. All right. And I'm not saying that to say that he couldn't have done the other because he was successful because his commitment to God. And brothers, he was wound up. When I say wound up, when he let go, amen, it was like Tiger Wood hitting off. 
with, yeah, with, 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 a, with a, uh, a wood. Uh, he drive that ball. That boy could drive that gospel. Amen. He preached that cycle about 25 years ago. Mm. I, I ain't gonna tell y'all the name because people are watching this, but uh, but but he was a dynamic preacher for God, and and it didn't live long uh, after he got out. And the pastor of such didn't live long, but died as a young man, less than uh, 45 years old. But I'm saying this to you: the time God gave him. Mm. He changed some people's lives forever. Mm -hmm. See, that's what God wanted to do, really. Yeah. God can find you yeah. anywhere yeah. Yes. and use you anywhere Amen, sir. to get his work done. Amen. <clears throat> Verse 10. He has not de dealt with us after our sin. Hallelujah nor rewarded us according to our iniquity. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Amen. I put an asterisk by this verse. Mm -hmm. The clearest evidence of God's mercy is in the way he deals with human sin. If he were to treat us as we deserve based on our sins, mm -hmm. then our plight would be hopeless. Amen, sir. Amen. Yeah. Uh, if thou, Lord, shouldest mark iniquities, O Lord, who shall stay? But there is forgiveness with thee, that thou mayest be feared. Yeah. Psalms 133 and 4. He hath not dealt with us after our sins. Mm. What do you say to that? Amen. Thank you, God. Thank you. Thank you, Thank Thank you. Lord. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Because you really could have dealt with me. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Lord, yes, yes. Hallelujah. Yes, yes. Amen. You, you could have left some scars on me that I never would have been able to shake off. Amen. Uh, mm. Nor rewarded us according to our iniquities. Amen. But God rewarded us according to his favor or his grace. Amen. Somebody know that you are living in the favor of God. Yes, sir. Amen, sir. Yes, sir. His <laughs> divine love for you. The clearest evidence of God's mercy, already said, is in the way he deals with human sin. Mm -hmm. Rather than condemning mankind, he sent salvation. Yeah. For all mankind. Mm. Verse 11 and 12 for us, the heaven is high above the earth. Yeah. So, so great Ooh. is his mercy yeah. toward them that what? Fear him. Fear him. Fear him. Mm. And that's not a dreaded fear, that's a reverence fear. Amen. Respect. It's respect. And we ought to have respect for God. And let me say this again, I, and, I, and, I, and I pray for our young people because it's not their fault. It's our fault yes, that sir. we have not taught them to respect God. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And the beginning of wisdom is the fear of the Lord. Mm. As far as the east is from the west, yeah, yeah, yeah. so far have he removed our transgressions from us. Lord. How far is the east from the west? There's no end. Amen. You can't, you go so far east, you west. That's right. And you go so far west, you east. Amen. So you can never tell how far the east really is from the west. That's how far he has removed our transgressions <coughs> from us. Yeah. Anybody that don't know it needs to know if you repent, yes. God will forgive. Lord. And though people keep bringing it up, yeah, Lord. the Lord descended east yeah, and west. Yeah, well, it'll never come back to you. The Lord has removed it from you. 
Hallelujah. I can say thank you. Thank you. And I said to you all before, a lot thank of times our biggest problem is we won't forgive us, won't let ourselves be forgiven. Mm -hmm. We think we don't deserve it. All right. Guess what? Right. You don't. Right. <laughs> you don't deserve it, but God offers it to you anyway. Yeah. Yes, sir. Don't keep talking about what you used to be and how you used to be unless you're saying it in an effort to give glory to God for what he's done for you. Don't, mm. don't say it or bring it up old situations mm. that make people think about what you used to be and you harboring what you used to be. Mm. Thank God for his deliverance. Yes. Thank God for his forgiveness. Thank God for his mercy. Compassionate, verse 13. <laughs> like a father pitches his children, pity of his children, so the Lord pitied them that fear him. Lord have mercy. Thank God. A good father. Some of y'all know it. After they whoop you a little while, they take pity on you. Ain't God good. As a father, and sometimes they won't whoop you at all. Amen. I don't think my daddy ever whooped my sister. And it's just me talking. <laughs> but I know he tore up them three boys. <laughs> but the Lord, but he took pity on them. And the Lord took pity on us. Amen. You know why the Lord takes pity on us? Because we pitiful. <laughs> yep. We are almost helpless. And we do things that we know they ain't right. <laughs> and he take pity on us and we do what? Do it again. <laughs> <laughs> the knowledge of God as a father is more clearly revealed in the New Testament because of the fuller revelation of God provided by Jesus. Mm -hmm. But God as father is not totally foreign to the Old Testament. Fathers who read a verse such as this ask themselves, how much sympathy they consistently demonstrate toward their children? Or do they provoke their children to anger, which Paul warns fathers not to do. But I'm here to say I'm glad that God has had pity on me. Yeah. For he knoweth our frame. He remembers that we are what? Dust. 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 One preacher preached that. He said, we ain't even dirt. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I think if the Lord laid a hand on us, man, we would just be dust. <laughs> hey, you'd be, you'd be right back to us. But because he pities us. Yeah, Lord. Thank you, God. Thank you. Thank you. And guess what? He knows. Our friends. Yes. Thank God he remembers. Thank you, Lord, yeah. for remembering. I'm like David. Yeah, in sin yeah. did my mother conceive me. Mm. I'm just dust. Mm. Amen. What do you think that expression that we are dust implies? Mm. I think he's kind of like reminding us where we came from. Okay. And where are we going to go back to? <laughs> yeah, that's true. But it implies something. The briefness of us. Huh? The briefness of us. That our briefness, yeah. What is it? I said value. Huh? Our value. value. Our value. All right. And when we're, what, what about saying our weakness? Well, dust is not strong anyway, really. Well, it blows, <laughs> it blows with every wind, though. He knows that we are but dust. Yeah. Right. yeah. We, 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 we're weak. Blow, right? anyway. yeah. David, wasn't that David argument in that 51st Psalm? No. You know, that, you know, and sin did my mother conceive me. You know I ain't nothing. Yeah. I ain't nothing. Yeah. But God makes me something. Yeah, Lord. But ain't that something God looks at us and said, Pope, I ain't, he don't know no better. <laughs> or she don't know no better. <clears throat> but when you learn better, uh, 
that message no. kind of changes a little bit. Exactly. <laughs> but he knows that we are dust. Mm. As for man, his days are as grass, as a flower of the field, so he flourishes, for the wine passeth over it, and it is gone. Wind, wind. wind. I'm sorry, the wind. wind. I got wine on my hand. I guess that's why I feel good. <laughs> I feel good. <laughs> <laughs> The wind passes over it, and it is gone. Again, that's, that's pointing back to our weakness. Mm -hmm. Amen. And the place thereof shall know it no more. Amen. And, 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 and really, in truth, we are told our life is but a vapor. Amen. It's nothing but a mist. And it won't be long. Ooh. Before we're gonna be gone, Amen, sir. Right. And we'll be known no more, not as we're known now. Amen. But the mercy of the Lord is from everlasting mm -hmm. to yeah. everlasting upon them that fear, fear Him. Yeah. What's the key here? Yeah, fear. fear Him. Fear Him. Isn't that what He says over in verse thirteen? Fear Him. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And the implication is throughout all of these compassionate things is that we've got to fear him. Yeah. In contrast with humanity's temporary fleeting existence, the mercy of the Lord is from everlasting to everlasting upon them that fear him. Yes, sir. This echoes the previous limitless language of verse 11 and 12. Rather than dwell on the frailty of human beings, David finds his delight in exalting the faithfulness of God. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. And that's what we ought to talk about, the faithfulness yeah. of God. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. God stick with us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can depend on him yes. to yes. keep his word. Yes. Finally, in closing exhortation, and this is verses 21 through 22, if you read on verses uh, 17b through verse 20, you'll see it's a continuation. And as this psalm nears its conclusion, David returns to his original command to do what? Bless, Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Bless. Yeah. In so doing, David calls on all of God's hosts to do so. Angels, and, and by the way, all of his hosts, ye ministers of his, mm -hmm. that do his pleasure. Mm -hmm. Amen. Now, you know angels, are ministers. Amen. They're messengers of God. And so he ain't talking about us here. He's talking about those uh, that occupy the places of service to God and that do his pleasure. Again, the parallelism. Bless the Lord, all ye his hosts, ye ministers of his, that's the hosts, that do his pleasure. Bless the Lord all his works in all places of his dominion. Bless the Lord, oh my soul. My Lord. And I say again, when I look back over my life, mm -hmm. and I see what God has done, yeah, yeah. I have to praise him. Praise him. I have to bless him. Bless him. I have to honor him. I have to thank him. Yes. I have to yield to him. David concludes with the call to the entire creation to join him in his adoration of the Lord. Mm -hmm. He does not want to perform a solo. He wants us to get together and give God his due. What is his due? Blessings Amen. and praise Amen. and honor. Amen. Glory. Glory. Yes. Honor. Praise. Yes. Worthy. When you read over in Revelation, they cry day and night. Worthy. 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 Praise God for all of his blessings. Learn to speak the language of blessings 
and praise. So you ought not be always complaining, mm. but you can be always praising. Praise. Yeah. We need a perpetual posture of praise mm. because he's been so good to me. Oh, yes. mm -hmm. Thank you, Lord. But I got to bless his name. Thank you, Lord. And I got to praise his name. Amen. Thank and I have to honor his name. Thank you, Lord. Mm -hmm. He's worthy. Worthy. Yes, he is. I say he's worthy. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. He's worthy. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. Of the praise. Yes, he is. Amen. 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 Amen.